creating charts helps visualizing our data. But creating dynamic charts where we can switch source values multiplies the usefulness of the chart and prepares it to be moved to a dashboard. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to create a dynamic chart and switch source values on the fly by using the new XLOOKUP function. In previous tutorials, I explored the basic functionality of the XLOOKUP function. You can watch these popular tutorials by clicking on the links below this video. And because until now, the XLOOKUP function is only available in Office 365 Insider Edition, so to spread the benefit, I'll be creating the same functionality using the classic index and match function. So let's see how we built our project from ground up in Excel. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. In this worksheet, I have some products in column A, and then in columns B through M, I have the quantity sold for each product in each month. What I would like to do is to create a chart that compares the sales for each product in each month. And in order to make it dynamic, I would like to be able to switch with a drop list from one month to another month and have my chart automatically update. And this is how our project should look like. I created a column chart which showed the product sales for each month and by clicking on the drop list in cell B9, I'm able to switch from one month to the other month and have my chart automatically update. So I'll be creating this project by using two different techniques. I start my project by creating a drop list in cell B9 for the different month. And I do that by clicking on the data tab of the ribbon and then I click on data validation. Alternatively, I use the shortcut Alt D L tab L tab. With my blinking cursor in the source box, I click and drag to select the different month and I would have created my drop list. Where I hit OK, here is my drop list. I can test it by selecting any month. The next step is to create a data preparation table. And the data preparation table sits between the source data and the chart we'll be creating. So the data preparation table will be feeding the chart. The table should have a header, so I'm selecting cell G9, and I'll be referring to the drop list. I type an equal sign, and I click on the drop list. So if I select a different option from the drop list, then my label will change automatically. For the row headers of my data preparation table, I'll be simply copying the names of the different products from column A. So I hit Ctrl C to copy, and then I select cell F10, and I'll be pasting Ctrl V. Now I'm ready to start creating the calculation that will extract the sales for each individual month. I'm going to do it first by using the classical index and match function. So I'm in cell G10 and I'll be typing equal index and then I hit tab. The first argument for the index function, which is an array, the range from which I need to extract a value, and this range will be all the values in my source list. And because I'm copying down, I don't want this range to change, so I lock it by hitting F4. I then hit comma, and the screen tip for the index function asks for a row number. And the row number corresponds to the order of the product. Dryers is number one, computers number three, and so on. And to extract the row number and provide it to the index function, I'll be using a match function. So I type match, and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? It's the product name to my left. And then I hit comma. Where do you look for it? Where is your lookup array? My lookup array is in column A all the products in column A, and I lock it by hitting F4 because I'll be copying down and I don't want it to change. I hit comma in the last argument. I'm looking for an exact match, so I type zero and I close the bracket. The next argument, if I hit comma and you look at the screen tip of the index function, it asks for a column number. And the column number depends upon the selected month. So I'll be extracting it by using another batch function. I type match, and then I hit tab. 
what would you like to match? I want to match the column header in G9. And because I'm copying down, I don't want it to change. So I lock it by hitting F4. And then I hit comma. Where is your lookup array? I look for this month in the top row, row number one. So I click and drag and select from B1 to M1. And because I don't want it to change, I lock it by hitting F4. And then I hit comma, I type zero, and then close the bracket for the second match function. And then close the bracket for the index function. When I hit enter, I was able to extract the value corresponding to dryers from the month of April. Now I can double click and send it down. And let's test how dynamic it is. If I change the value from the drop list and select a different month, I'm able to extract the values corresponding to the selected month. Now, before I create my chart, I want to repeat the same exact thing by using the XLOOKUP function, which has been recently released to Excel. Up till now, it's only available in Office 365, the Insider Edition. Let's see how we create this function. I click on the next sheet. I'll be creating my data validation list, I'll the L tab, L tab, and then I want to select the different months for the drop list as we did before, and then I hit OK, and I created my drop list. Now I want to create a reference to the drop list in cell G9. I type an equal sign and click on cell B9 and then hit Enter. I want to copy the labels, so I click and drag. To select from A2 to A6, Control C, and I'll be pasting the labels exactly as we did before. What if I want to extract the values for February? How do I do it? I can do it by using an XLOOKUP function nested in another XLOOKUP function. So let me explain the concept. If I want to extract an entire column, I'll be typing equal XLOOKUP and then I hit tab, and the XLOOKUP function can extract an entire array of values. It asks me, what's your lookup value? My lookup value will be the month, and I don't need to lock anything. I hit comma, what's your lookup array? Where do you look for this value? I look for this value in the top row. I click and drag to select the entire range. I don't need to lock it. I hit comma, and where is your return array? Well, my return array will be this entire range of values, and I don't even need to lock anything. When I close the bracket, I'll be extracting all the values corresponding to the selected month. And I'll be using this XLOOKUP function and nest it in another XLOOKUP function that will look at the product. Of course, if I have the same order, I can just use this function by itself, but because I don't guarantee that the order will change if someone is sorting this product, so I'm going to copy this function by clicking and dragging in the formula bar, and I'll be copying this XLOOKUP function to the Office clipboard, and then I hit Escape. I don't need it anymore, so I'll be hitting the Delete key. I select the entire range, and I type equal XLOOKUP, and the lookup value will be the name of the product to my left. And then I hit comma. Where do you look for this product? What is your lookup array? My lookup array will be the entire range from A2 to A6. And then I hit comma. And finally, my return array will be the first XLOOKUP function that I saved in the Office clipboard. So I'll be pasting it. And then I close the bracket. And then I hit Control enter to populate this function. Let me test how dynamic it is. I click on the down pointing arrow and select the different month. And sure enough, Excel is extracting the right values. Now that I created my preparation table, whether I created it by using the index and match function or I created by using the XLOOKUP function, I would like to represent these values graphically by creating a chart. So I select the range that I want to represent graphically, and I want to create the default chart, which is a column chart. So I use the shortcut Alt F1. Here is my default chart. I want to improve the appearance of this chart. First of all, I want to get rid of these horizontal lines. I click on any one of them. These are called horizontal grid lines, and I hit the Delete key on my keyboard. I don't need the vertical axis or the value axis. I select it and hit the delete key on my keyboard. I also want to reduce the gap between the different columns. So I click on any one of the columns and then I use the shortcut Control 1 to open the format data series pane. I have a gap width slider. So if I drag this slider a little bit to the left, I'll be reducing the gap between the different columns. I can also 
change the color of each one of these columns by clicking on the fill icon, the bucket icon here at the top, the fill and line. I expand the fill option and from here I select vary color by points. I can close the format data series pane and now I want to bring the data labels which are these numbers because I want to move my chart and position it on top of the data preparation table. I do this by clicking on the plus sign, the chart elements button, and then I check data labels. Let's format the data labels. So you click on any one of them, you go to the home tab, and then you can bump it up, let's say to 11, and then you can bold it. I will be doing the same exact thing for the horizontal axis, the category axis, which are the product names. I click on the horizontal axis, I bump it up to 11 as well, and then I click on the bold command. I would also like to bevel these columns, so I click on one of the columns, I go to the format tab of the ribbon, and then I click on the down arrow of shape effects, I go down to bevel, and from the submenu I select the rounded bevel. Now that I created my chart, I want to create a chart title, and in order to create a dynamic chart title that shows the month, I'm going to prepare for that by selecting cell D9 and I'll be combining a string of text with the name of the month coming from cell G9. I type an equal sign in double quotations, total sales 4 and a space and then I close the double quote. I want to join it to the month coming from the data preparation table which comes from the drop list so I'll be using the joining operator of Excel shift 7 on your keyboard and then click on cell. G9. So when I hit enter, now it says total sales for April, and that's fine. Let's bring it to the chart title. So I click on the chart title, and I want to put it in the edit mode, so I hit F2. When I hit F2, I see my blinking cursor appearing in the formula bar. So I'll be typing an equal sign, and I click on cell D9. When I hit enter, now I can see the total sales for April. I can bold it if I want. And now I just want to bevel the entire chart, so I click on the outer border, and then I click on the Format tab. This is a shape, so I want to bevel that shape by clicking on Shape Effects, Bevel, and I select Rounded Bevel. Now I can position my chart on top of the data preparation table. There is no need to show the data preparation table because all the functionality is in this drop list. If you want to change the month, select a different month from the drop list, then your column chart updates and your chart title updates as well. So if I select a different month, the chart title updates and the column chart updates as well. Although it's nice to have a drop list to switch the source data as we learned in this tutorial, we need to impress our customers, managers and colleagues by having the drop list within the chart, in the chart title itself. Don't miss the second part of the project where I show you how to create this magical functionality by clicking on the link below this video. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.